Welcome. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing and then solo playthrough of D-Day Dice Pocket Edition. So down at the table, go ahead and get the shrink wrap off and see what's inside here. So a fairly small box. So I got a few minutes to kill. Go conquer the beaches of Normandy. The small box contains two complete and epic games set during the 1944 landings. Fast, fun, and easy to learn. These games can be played anywhere. So D-Day Dice Battle, it's a push your luck party game for any number of players, which I'm assuming means one to eight. Where you use your allied dice to match the Axis dice and score points while other players employ metal cards to hinder your efforts. Or D-Day Dice Express, great for solitaire and cooperative play. One to four players must conquer the beaches sector by sector using specialists to thwart Axis defenses. Both games have basic and advanced rules and also included special rules to add to the D-Day Dice second edition game, which I do not have. But if I like this good enough, I might go out and get it. So opening the box up here, we've just got a bag of specialized dice. So it looks like we've got some red, white, and blue and gray for axes. And then a couple other dice. Then a nice dice bag. And our quick rolls. Welcome to D-Day Dice Pocket. So just one sheet, nicely folded up. And Express is what I'll be trying out here in a bit. And just the regular D-Day dice. And then some trash to throw away and some other cards. So the cards are going to be two reference. So on one side we're going to have reference for D-Day Dice Express. And then the other is the battle game. Just flipping those over. Then a mini expansion for bringing out the MGF or the machine gun fire die. And the six different beach cards for the solo mode. So on one side we've got beaches one, two, and three. So Utah Beach, Gold Beach, and Juno Beach. And then flip those over for beaches four, five, and six. And then also for the Express game, some miniature cards. We've got specialists. So depending on dice combinations, we can possibly get a veteran, a medic, an engineer, general, hero, corporal, or a captain. And on the flip side for the other game, these are the medals you can get. Medal of Honor, Memorial Cross, Purple Heart, Silver Star, Croup de Guerre, Victoria Cross, and Legion of Merit. So for solo mode, all we need is our Axis dice, our dice, and the beach die here. And we're gonna have that set to the landing symbol. And then of our six beaches, we're just gonna start at one, going to Utah Beach. So for the landing, if you have no general, at the end of step six, roll one additional Axis die next sector. So the steps we're doing here, starting new invasion, start at the landing zone. For returning from step eight, we advance to the next phase. Step two, roll axis dice equal to the number of the current beach sector. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, or six axis dice. Then we get to roll our allied dice and re-roll, and we can do that two more times. So kind of Yahtzee style, we've got three rolls to get what we want. We can use specialist cards to improve our results. Check our final tally. If it contains RWBs, red, white, and blue, if we get the same symbol in those colors, we'll be able to get one of our specialist cards. And then step seven, for the squad to clear, every soldier's final tally must match the axis dice, one for one. And then if the sector is cleared, we'll go to the next sector. If the bunker is cleared, which will be the final objective, we've one, and if we don't clear the sector, 
Our squad has failed and we've lost the game. Try again. So at the landing, like I said, for this one, if you have no general at the end of step six, roll an additional axis die next sector. So we're just gonna roll one axis die to start with. So on our dice rolls, we need to get at least one metal. So we've got three rolls here. And right off the bat, we've got it and we've got a red, white, and blue. And normally we can only get one of these, but in solo mode, there's potential to get two cards. So we can roll this two more times to see if we get a single soldier. And we did. So that means with we've met the criteria here. So we'll get this. So we're gonna have a general. All players can change the result of one of their dice, but not its color. And we also find a corporal. Well, just, just to add a single to the final tally of all players. This result has no color. So we've met our objective and we have a general. So we're going on to barriers. So we'll change this. Players are not allowed to reroll their white dice here. Now we're going to get two axis dice. Two skulls is what we need. And we cannot reroll white. All right. So just like that, we've got this criteria. We can't re-roll white. So we will continue rolling here. And roll again. All right, so we got a red wrench there. And since we can change the result of one of our dice, we can make this a blue one. So the engineer will be picking up one. So one of our wrenches in the final tally of all players can be changed to any color and result. We will move on to the next rally point. So we add a star to the axis dice here. So it's rolling three dice and it looks like it's automatically gonna get a star. That's what we rolled, and the additional star. So we found a star, we need two medals, and a skull. Got an engineer, which I'll hold on to. And we'll roll again, see if we can get a, another wrench here. And we didn't, but we can change this to any result. So we've met our needs there. So now moving on to the gauntlet. So our squad loses one specialist for each skull in the axis dice. If you have no specialist left, ignore this. So we don't want to be rolling that here and we are going to be rolling four dice. So we're going to lose one specialist. And just seeing that we have this and the corporal automatically gets it for us, we'll lose the engineer. So we already have that made because of our corporal. So we need two medals and the skull. So there's a the skull. Could risk keeping that. Got a medal. And we can change the result of one of ours. So yeah, I'm good with keeping that one. We've got it made there. We've got one more roll to do, just see if we can do it naturally without any help. 
So the corporal is going to give us our single. We've got red, white, and blue. So we can pick up a medic. Sacrifice a medic. All players ignore their dice and restart the sector at step three, which is us rolling to meet this. We move on to the bluffs. Roll four axis dice here. All players must roll one less allied die. There are four dice. And we are only rolling five. We really don't need those because of this card. So we need skulls and stars and we didn't get any. So roll number two. So we need some stars here. And we got none. So we can change one of these to a star, but we're gonna fail. So in that case, we use our medic. So we go back to step three and start over. Once again, nothing. One star. And final roll. All right, we got a star. We can change the result of one of our dice to anything. So the general saves us. And the corporal gives us our man here, so we made it. So now we're going on to the bunker. So if any player rolls a red, white, and blue here, the game is lost. Oops. And we're going to need to match all six symbols. So we got two medals, two single soldiers, a wrench, and skull. So we've already got that one taken care of. And we just need to make sure we get all these symbols and don't get red, white, and blue. So there's that symbol. Got that one taken care of. And that's taken care of. So we need a wrench and another award here. And one final roll. So we've got the award and the general comes in and can make a wrench for us. So we were able to meet our goal at Utah Beach, and that's the basics of how to play D-Day Dice Pocket Edition. So just a quick dice rolling game. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, so please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.